<laughs> Rhubarb! Loudly and clearly. <coughs> 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 Alright. Greetings and welcome, brave citizens of our new world. I am Toronto's greatest supervillain and evil genius, Dr. Terawatt. This is our Layer 3.0, and today is day 19 of our VEDA Challenge, VEDA. <laughs> Vlogging every day in April. Yesterday I made some comments about how I wasn't going to be playing games like Black Desert because the character customization kind of fell short, but it's been a few years since I checked it out, and Recluse, ta-da, decided to prove me wrong by making a character very much to the likeness of me. Teensy bit embarrassing. So I've been actually looking at that in the spare 15 minutes that I had today, just checking out their website, seeing they've added like twice as many classes to it than previous. There's a bunch of uh, updates and upgrades and stuff to it, so we are going to be looking at that, and if that is the game that we have, or that we decide to choose going forward, I've got like 10 free passes I can give to the people who donate to us on Patreon in our gaming section in the comments area down below, you will find a link to that. I know that I've been been super busy doing this, and I apologize for sort of the rushed nature of some of these, what does it say? <laughs> okay, cool. But as you can see, one of my main living areas looks like this. So, I'm working on five pistols, two rifles, and some other specialty weaponry that is going to be used by minions at events. Minions and hench people at events will be given these sort of standard firearms. I'm not sure if I'm going to sell these, probably not, as a lot of the parts used in them have very strict rules about resale. So, I don't want to get caught on resale log. Mm. But anyways, that's why I'm kind of on and off certain days. So we got a lot of responses from people when I asked you guys, what do you think about the Warfront? Damn! Da damn! We got a lot of responses. A lot of people saying that they think I should keep the name The Warfront because it makes a lot of sense for something that works for uh, as a, a political and a scientific sort of vlog. Some other people giving me some suggestions like have it be like The Warfront episode number, code, and then whatever the show's about, which I thought was a cool idea. A lot of people definitely saying that they don't want it to be just political because hearing about science stuff too would be a lot of fun. There was a suggestion about having it like every week it's a different sort of thing, so like one week is, you know, science political, another week is, you know, answering questions and fan mail and stuff like that, but what I want to do is have two episodes coming out each week. One of them is The Warfront, which is why I'm shortening it to just one topic of video, and the other one would be Questions Friday, where I answer questions from you guys, very much like these videos, and open up fan mail. For when I get time to go to the post office and go through the rigmarole of opening a P.O. box, I'm sorry I don't have that yet, but I'm working on it. So anyways, thank you so much for all of your suggestions. Actually, I'm going to take a lot of that into consideration when we decide to go ahead with the you know, full steam on the train thing. We are also going to be planning on doing short films maybe-ish around one a month is is kind of what we're looking at like just little little short videos that aren't warfront or uh questions friday just other little stuff that's going to be happening so stay tuned have you considered changing your title from toronto's greatest supervillain to ontario's greatest supervillain it might chafe professi chrome domes britches but i think it's high time you make a change i have considered that going from toronto to ontario to canada and then eventually the world but i'm not there yet not yet close I like remembering though where my roots are, so I'm gonna like I'm gonna keep it Toronto's for now, and we're gonna there is gonna be time to work up to that though, don't you worry. I've been in significant battles with the law over whether or not my house was legally built or owned by me in its current location. I am not one to live in city, as it is not swampy forest. Clearly their attempts at my removal from my house have not been successful when the spells wear off and they remember I'm there or new law enforcement finds me again. I'm in the same trouble. My question, if people want to live on their own in the wilderness, how will that fit into the terawatt world? What with your implanted on the grid enforcing chips? The chips that I'm implementing aren't designed necessarily for to, to, to make people live in certain situations. If you want to go carve out a piece of swamp and live there, then feel free. It's just if people, like, if someone comes in and says, oh, that swamp witch attacked me last night at three, then they check the records and go, no, they were in the swamp the whole time. Like, I just want to have that kind of technology available for the convenience of finding and identifying certain people as well as purchasing stuff. But I don't want to come in between, you know, people in the swamp. My mom lives out in the woods, for God's sake. So, like, why would I... Will you create especially harsh punishments for people who do stupid things that annoy the general populace, such as making a turn without signaling, talking during movies, writing a check for under a dollar. Yes, yes, there is a special level of hell reserved for people who molest children, talk during the theater, and write checks for less than a dollar. We are gonna have 
punishments for things like that, obviously, but it's going to be some silly thing like fines and whatnot, or just that you can't write checks for less than a dollar. Will be any characters from the Death of Holocaust and Rise of Terrawatt, outside of Ninja Hades, Ace of Blades, etc., be making a return in the future? Okay, so, like, will any of the plethora of characters that we introduced be making a comeback? Yes. In a lot of the short films that we're going to be releasing throughout the rest of the year, we are going to be calling back and bringing back a lot of those characters. Stay tuned. Would you be willing slash are you planning to make tutorial videos again like the steampunk shotgun or the power gloves videos way back when? Yes, because one of the easiest questions that I get from people is how did you make that and it's really easy to just turn them to the website that we've got here and just be like go to my YouTube, go look at that and the videos are there because it's super complicated. I can't in three sentences or less sum up how I decided to make a weapon that disassembles matter on the atomic level. At least not a way that satisfies me. If I should succeed, as you have stated is a possibility, how would you like to die? I broke Grexia's neck and I plan on killing all the Magi quickly so as not to face the same fate as I did on my original world. 300 years as a statue is very boring. I like a good death. Death in combat, I think, is a way. Are you more of a tea or coffee person, or do you prefer neither or both? I think coffee tastes like mud. I think it tastes like water with dirt in it, so I am definitely a tea person, but two sugars and one milk, soy milk please, regular milk, it's bad for the nanites. I assume that while you take over the world, you would be allied with fellow villains. However, once you do this and you begin your reign as world ruler, you might set rules or do things that your colleagues might have great issue with. What would you do about betrayals? Also, how would you go about recruiting fellow villains to your cause? Will, we, will they be fully informed on what to expect once you succeed? Oh, I'm a very all-cards-on-the-table kind of villain. I don't have the time, nor do I care to be deceitful or lie. A lot of the people that work with me are just bad guys who don't want to rule the world. They're people that are much more along the lines of they want to cause mayhem and things like that. And there will always be a place for that, in my opinion. I mean, sure, we'll have robotic enforcement divisions, but, I mean, if we find ourselves a nest of organized crime, I mean, who's to say Ace isn't going to want to go in there and clean it out himself? A singular bank, you say. I am sure a certain group would be overjoyed to hear about this. Green Share and the rest of the tellers are probably thinking about everything they're going to be doing with all of their upcoming vacation time. Anyways, on to questions. In your future world, you submit that machines and variations of non-human, non-organic systems will replace certain jobs and careers, i.e. law enforcement, mining, emergency response. My question is, what do you have planned for those who were performing those positions before? And what are the plans for those who would want to perform them after you implement your reforms? Once I've automated certain jobs like enforcement and emergency response mining and things like that, I do what the rest of the world has always done when jobs have become automated, and that's too bad. Uh, what I would like to do is take those people, put them on a limited sort of pension, like a retirement pension for an amount of time, to say that, okay, you have this much time with income to get yourself retrained and find another job. I'm sorry that your job has become automated, but... This is the future, we're going to be moving forward, and we would like to put you in another position. If you worked in emergency response as a person who drove an ambulance once upon a time, maybe you'd be happier trying to, I don't know, be a nurse, work in the hospital somewhere, in the medical division still. I want to keep people happy, and I want to stop the loss of jobs as much as possible, but I'm not going to allow those kinds of things to stop us from progressing forward. If you were put into a MOBA such as Heroes of the Storm, what would be your abilities and ultimate move? Oh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I think that I would have... Uh, short to mid-range, like, lightning shots out of the gloves, uh, a small area of effect stun, like a sonic weapon kind of thing. I think that one of my abilities might be moving from one part of the map to the other through the, the gravity thread system, or GT transit, as I call it. That's a whole thing I'm going to explain later. And then the ultimate, of course, atomic dismemberment array. Just a big old friggin' beam gun. Blam. Like Diablo's lightning scream breath. <laughs> because I love that. I think it's so much fun. Hey doc, I had a question about the virus that stops aging. If you were, say, 80 when the virus happens, would you start remain 80 years old from then on? Dude, proofread. Not complaining, BTW. I'd be cool being an old man for a long time. Just wondering. Actually, the tests that we've run with the virus already show that, um, at least the, the lab mice who were ravaged by old age and things like that, when given this virus, their telomere was set to zero, and they actually age slowly backwards to where, in, in our case, would be the end of our developmental cycle, so late teens, early 20s. I'm not sure how long that process would take, and you might need to lay down for a bit, but you would regenerate 
slowly backwards to the person you were at that time. Dear Doc, any movement on getting yourself on Channel Awesome? No. I, I mean, honestly, I haven't talked to a lot of those people. A handful of some of the sort of B-list creators, not like, you know, Doug Walker, but some of the other people have actually reached out to me and said congratulations on the new channel and such. But I haven't reached out to them yet. I'm thinking of doing that sometime between the end of April and Con Bravo, just to see if I can touch base and maybe work with some people. How you doing, Doc? You seem to be having your ups and downs over the last few days, energy-wise, and I'm just checking in. Well, I mean, with all the guns that I have in the other room, all the other things that I've been working on, I mean, my days kind of vary from I've got energy today and I'm feeling peppy and energetic when I sit down to do the video, to I'm not and I don't and I feel awful and I'm in pain, so... <laughs> I apologize for the inconvenience, it's sort of like the flip-flop, like some days I'm really tired and some days I'm really peppy and energetic, but that's just, if I'm doing this literally every day, you're gonna catch me on good days and bad days. And that is all the time that we have for today. Gosh! Thank you everybody for leaving your comments uh, about the Warfront ideas and your questions and everything for the discussions and everything that you guys are starting, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. So until next time, my brave citizens, uh, I am Toronto's greatest supervillain and evil genius, Dr. Terawatt. This is our Layer 3.0, and I will see you tomorrow on our next Vita. End of line.